okay, I'm gonna talk about summer reading. Uh, I know this past summer was sort of a, a, probably a nightmare for most of you, but I'm going to talk a little bit about, we'll talk a little bit about last year or this past summer, and we'll talk a little bit about going forward from here, um, things that CSLP um, will be doing in the future. And um, then I, I'd like to give the floor to some of you if you wanna talk about um, how your summer went. So um, I know it's, I've got a very large group here, so um, we will, um, I'll try to give everybody a chance to talk about that if you want to. So um, let's get started. <clears throat> All right. Oops, my screen just went away. Okay, can everyone see the, um, my PowerPoint? Yeah, head's nodding. Okay. Yes. So, all righty. Okay, so here we go. Um, so the theme this year will be animals. So um, tells and tales are, is our um, slogan. And, um, so we will um, get started here. All right. All right. So as I said, 2020 didn't quite work out for the mo for most of us. Um, I know we kind of had to, uh, or you guys had to. I, I didn't really have a whole lot to do. Uh, kind of rethink summer reading um, this year, and uh, I know from what I've heard from other. Um, folks who do a similar job that I do, um, they've learned some good, some things, and they've, um, of course, we were disappointed that you didn't get to have um, your interaction with your kid, kids like you usually do, and um, so I'm just kind of plant this in your mind so that we talk about this a little bit later, um, some, some of the things that you learned, some of the things that you um, might carry over into um, 2021 and if you want to vent about 2020 go right ahead so we'll we'll get to that a little bit later all right so 2020 for CSLP there were some major changes um, and some issues <laughs> I'm sure some of you remember and of course the, that we all had to deal with uh, the Rona and uh, so the first when I Normally I go to the annual meeting and we have a couple of days we get to process everything that's happened and all the new things that are coming down the, the pike um, for 20 for the next year. Of course this year we didn't have our annual meeting um, in a location we had to um, do it all online just like we're doing right now. So it was kind of the um, short and sweet bare bones meeting uh we just talked about it for maybe a, a couple of, maybe two hours um to kind of give a, a re a, a, an overview of what happened so i want to try to share that with you right now um the first big issue we know was um the new online store there were lots of bugs in <laughs> the new online store um, i don't know if any of you experienced those bugs but um, from what I, we were told that um, there's, there was a lot of problems with the software, how they categorized things, the categories broke, um, there was no customer notification, no tracking numbers, it was just an unholy mess from what I gather. Um, so they learned a lot <laughs> in how to run a store because if you remember Demco um, before this year, did everything. So they were very good at this. They had it down to us. I have it down to a science because that's all they do is sell product. And uh, CSLP decided to take it over so that um, they could get more of the profits. And um, but along with that came a lot more work than I think they were anticipating. And they also had some um, inventory issues. Um, there were delays getting things out to the warehouse. There were, um, of course, with the artwork issue, they had to pull a lot of their inventory and that caused people to buy other things that weren't necessarily probably going to be big sellers and they t ended up being larger because um, selling more quantity of that because there was not as many 
options available. So that caused a, a, a big issue. And then there were shipping, when they said order it by this date to get it in time for this, caused a big influx of people ordering and they weren't anticipating that either. Um, so that caused, uh, again, another uh, crash. I think I think he said that the system crashed and that the, there were huge delays in things. And as I mentioned about the artwork issue, uh, those of you who were, I was doing the, um, I was on, I was doing my uh, tour to state, as I like to call it, for summer reading trainings, and this all broke while I was on the road, and I had to run to the hotel and print out the statement that CSLP had issued. Um, if you, if you're not familiar with what happened uh, for the last, for this past year, we had uh, some artwork that um, the artist had intended to be inclusive by including some Native American imagery. And uh, some states uh, felt that that was not appropriate um, to be put on their to be put on the poster as um, fairy tales and mythology. So they had to pull a lot of those items, um, namely the big poster and um, I think the mobile. And there were quite a few other things that that got pulled. And um, of course, that caused a big, big issue. They had to destroy. $250,000 worth of products. So that really hurt a lot of their bottom line this year. Um, there were reorder delays because they had to reorder things that people were um, buying in place of this item. And I think ultimately they did reissue uh, or redo a poster. Um, so they, auto uh, they ultimately did get that, um, get a poster out. Um, because of the because of this stink um, and and whole cluster that happened, um, they have decided to change how they approach artwork from now on. Um, there's going to be an artwork committee there, or they've always had an artwork committee, and they've also had a um, a committee for inclusion and diversity. So now the process is going to be the artwork committee will work with the artist and then the inclusion and diversity committee will look at the, um, the artwork and, and see if, it, if there's anything that can be um, a red flag that might come up. They're also going to be working with the Cooperative Children's Book Center. It's at the University of Wisconsin. And uh, so they're going to be working closely with them to determine um, ways to approach artwork in in the future so hopefully this whole um cluster that happened this year won't happen again that's ultimately the the decision or the the way we want to go because we don't want this to happen again because as i said it did hurt their bottom line and being um an all volunteer nonprofit and membership dues and the items they sell are pretty much their only revenue streams. This really did um, and it hurt a lot. Um, they're also working on a challenge document. So if you do, you or someone raises an issue when, you know, if I show you the new artwork, this is what we were envisioning the artwork for 2023 and somebody sees it and they think, well, you know, that's questionable. Um, there will be a document that you can fill out and uh, it will go to the CSLP board. They will then look at it and um, take it to the inclusion committee, take it to the artwork committee and um, there will be channels to, to do this um, properly if this happens again. Hopefully it will not happen again. That's our, that's our ultimate goal here is for, not, for, for it to not happen again. Um, and of course, the biggest wrench in the system was COVID-19. Um, I think I skipped over. COVID-19 was the biggest issue that I think all, well, that's all we've been dealing with most of the year. Um, and of course, for CSLP, the first year that they decide to to do these, to sell incentives, we have a big issue. and. So a lot of the items were returned to the um, to the warehouse because the libraries were closed. They were not getting orders made or sent because UPS had changed their policy from doing 
three attempts to one and you're done. So everything was going back. That rippled into called reshipping costs that um, ended up 30% of the ship. They went over 30% on the budget because of once something got returned to the <clears throat> to the warehouse they had to reship it so it wasn't like you could just send it back out you had to go pay for a shipping so they were paying double on a lot of items um and the reshipping was difficult to track because they had no they had no mechanism to retract so they didn't know whose things got resent so and i also at the meeting they i was told that if you did not receive any of your items that you um ordered let them know that it never came through. Um, they said there was a lot of them setting in a warehouse in Salt Lake City and they don't know what happened. They're just, that's the last thing on the tracking number is that they're at a, a hub in Salt Lake City and they never got sent out. So if you did not receive them, you can either email me and I can pass it along or if you've got your information on your um, order form, uh, or be sure to check in with them because they, they don't have a way to find out if it actually ultimately got sent out to you without doing an investigation. So um, if that happened, um, please let them know. Um, and of course they had warehouse, of course, like all of us, you know, our, our employees got sent home and they dropped down to half staff. And um, <clears throat> so a lot of the um, things got just <laughs> totally messed up. All right. Um, so any, everything else <laughs> from the, the meeting that I um, would like to pass along, like I said, the, the sales were down this year. Um, mostly it was because of the, the COVID, and, um, but some of it had to do with the artwork issue. So they were about a million dollars down. This is um, from yesterday's meeting. We were told that this is going to actually impact this coming year because they don't have the revenue. Normally, this is the revenue stream to buy product for next year. So there may not be as many items offered next year or limited you know, limited amount of things. So just be aware of that because they don't have the capital to invest into the items. And then, so it, it's rippling on into next year. Uh, they did fix the issues they said with the software so the catalog the the category sh hopefully not i don't have anything wood but knock wood it doesn't crash um the organization of the site's better they said uh, you will receive notices and you're supposed to be receiving tracking information um they're also going to add a multi-product order feature so uh, apparently like if you wanted to order five posters for your library you could only you had to order one two three four five now there's supposed to be a pull down menu where you can add or a box that you can add the number in there so that's um another thing that they've worked on and um this year was a growing year and of course it probably or an experimental year and it probably you know it didn't turn out to be the best year to start a new um, online store but um, hopefully they have learned and um, or figured out what was actually there in problems versus what was COVID issues so uh, hopefully this year's coming year's ordering will be a lot better. Um, there's going to <clears throat> excuse me, there's a plan for another su supplemental book. Uh, I know, I don't know if all of you saw that but um, I believe it was in a April or May they they offered a, a supplemental to the manual that pulled from some old manuals about things that you could do online or you could send uh, to take and make projects and <coughs> excuse me and um, so they, they kind of put that all together really quickly and um, it was very popular so um, they're going to offer that again this year because the manual was made back you know we're working at, at least a year to a year and a half in advance so again this manual that we have that'll be coming out um now was made about a year ago so a lot of the again the, the issues with online or um, in-person meetings um, are not addressed. So they are planning to do another supplemental um, booklet.
and of course once that happens we'll I'll pass along that information to you. Um, policies and procedures are being updated. This is boring board um, information, but um, there are some outdated information there that they need to update and take care of. And um, that's stuff that, you know, it, it's coming, um, coming down the line. Um, there will be a new remittance address. So th those of you who are gonna be paying for your items uh, are, a uh, person who's basically the manager of all of that, she just moved from Florida to Vermont. So uh, kind of probably a big <laughs> weather shock for her right now. Um, and as soon as she gets uh, situated up there, she's going to uh, pass along that new information. And uh, they also issued a statement on all the current events, all the events that happened, excuse me, um, that happened, of course, um, in the past few months. So they've, the, the, the board decided to um, issue a statement and that is now on the homepage and I will show you this one, once we get to the um, homepage. And for your information, when I, I'm talking a lot about the board because since um, June, I have been a member of the CSLP board. I was asked to fill in for a, um, an, a vacated term it was a member at large and in September when we had our annual meeting we had a vote in and I get to now fill out the the remainder of that term so I am on the CSLP board so hopefully I'll learn more about the ins and outs of the organization that I can pass along to you guys and um, you you might get a better uh, better understanding of how CSLP works because I'm getting a better understanding of how CSLP works and um, and just yesterday, we um, our incoming president, our president-elect, has resigned her post, and they are in the midst of um, a new search for a new for a new incoming president. She will be. Um, she's currently the vice president, and um, she will be resigning her her post uh, at the end of this month. So we'll be in the uh, president hunt uh, for the next couple of months, and. Um, so that's something else that will be coming along. There will be some listening sessions that um, they're offering next week in, um, or not next week, the week after next on on the um, um, 21st of October at 1 p.m. And on the 23rd of October at 3 p.m. There's gonna be some listening sessions like they did with the summer reading. Um, about themes and what was coming up um, about what they're going to do with the, the new president I or presidential search um, I will pass those along to you if you want them just send me an email or I can um, um, I will post this out onto the directors and uh, WVLA listserv so if you want to uh, attend any of those all right so what happened 2020 in West Virginia. Oops. Well, this is where I wanted you guys to, to, to kind of tell me what you were doing. Um, of course, our big thing is that we all did a, we did a statewide read squared program and I know um, quite a few of you signed up for it. So now is the time for you to um, ex tell me what you thought about, let me do. Um, what you thought about um, Read Squared, if you were a part of it, if you weren't, maybe this is a time to ask some questions. Let's see what's going on in the chat. I can't, uh, can't see it right now. Lisa, while uh, people are talking or typing uh -huh. and thinking about questions, uh, Rick, Put in the chat uh, when you say next year are you talking about summer 2021 or summer 2022 2021 which will be next calendar year so um okay yeah and i for some reason can't my chat's not coming up here uh, i'm not and i'm not seeing it must be on my set other screen where i'm doing the screen save screen sharing and I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Aha. 
That's okay. Um, I got it and I can okay. share uh, what's being expressed okay. in the chat. Okay. Uh, Beth from Burnsville said she thought Read Square will be good, but she just didn't have the time right now to figure it out. It's okay. on her to do list. Okay. Yeah. And if you and if you were able to go to that, um, the Read Squared follow up meeting a couple a couple weeks ago, I know um, they explained how to use it in other ways. So if you are doing uh, the thousand books before kindergarten and doing some other items, you can use it. Um, you can use it in other capacities. It doesn't have to be summer reading. And if you want to use it for the upcoming Family Read Week, which I'm going to get a plug in for my next session later today, um, use it for that if you want to experiment with things. And um, hopefully you can find other little projects along the year before summer hits again um, to maybe learn how to use it. I know I do see somebody said it wasn't the most user friendly. And I as some people did say that it was not one of the most user friendly, um, I guess, compared to Beanstack, but it was, um, I found when comparing them, it looked like it was a lot, um, I think they were going to offer a lot more help than, um, than Beanstack folks were. So um, I think it was one of those, you know, what you, trade offs kind of thing. Um, so Beth really liked it. Um, and I've been curious to, if anyone, um, how they did their summer feeding program. Because I know that was a big, I'm, I'm also on that committee. So um, that's always one I'm always curious on how you were able to, how, how, did, how did COVID impact that? Um, did it? Um, I know in Braxton County, our summer feeding program, the libraries put together what they wanted to do. The food bank came one day a week to each library. Mm -hmm. um, ours was Monday and then Sutton's was Wednesday and Gasaway's was Friday. They gave out five lunches for each child, the five milks. Um, and then they, they had gotten a supplemental grant and they were able to give out protein, a gallon of milk for each child, and then um, a box of produce or some type of fresh produce. We had, we, we served over a thousand children over the summer. So is that more than you normally do? Oh or? yeah, okay. way more. We usually, we usually at the first year, the first year that I did my five day a week program, we did 488 meals total. So serving a thousand plus children in a in a summer, like quadrupled what we normally do. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I've heard that some people were able to, you know, it, it really impacted in how many kids came to your events. And then some people were like, well, the school did it. And, you know, they passed them out with buses. I know some places had buses come out. And uh, I think I saw that in one of the chats. Um, so it was kind of, you know, I don't know if it, how, imp how much it impacted you. Um, when I, we had our last committee meeting uh, last week and a lot of um, people were talking about how they were able, and they're probably from areas that are, um, we're, I think most of West Virginia is probably eligible for um, these programs anyway. They were in places that were not normally eligible for it, so they were able to get to get it to, at their library because of the the changes to the um, the FDA or USDA, whoever puts it on, um, had changed some of the um, eligibility requirements. So that um, that impacted a lot of um, libraries that were not normally uh, have it. So that kind of leads me into like what I was saying. I was going to have you talk the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, this is <laughs> this is a chance if you want to talk about you know did you like um, kind of you know did you like Read Square? Did you not? That you know that's always on the table. Um, maybe how you had to approach summer was it? Are there, did did you find out that maybe the like the 
say the grab and go things were just totally amazing and the kids loved them the parents loved them we're going to keep doing them so that that would be a good and a bad i suppose you had to do it but then you ended up getting something good from it um so anybody want to share like something that just either great that just you weren't weren't expecting or something that just totally flopped um just kind of share some ideas what what all you were doing i know there's a lot of us here so um if anyone wants to start go right ahead i guess they can unmute themselves right heather yes they okay. can unmute themselves Okay, and I'm going to look in the chat here to see if anybody wants to just, if you want to put it in the chat, you can do that as well. So, um, so Beth, so she's continuing to make the make and take kits, definitely not going as fast as they did this summer, but they are going. And again, another plug for, for my session later today, um, I'm going to be doing the family read week um, idea. So I think the maybe you might be able to pick up maybe get a little pickup of your take and make kits then. Uh, it, I don't know. I got some ideas. So um, anyone one else to share to share what they did? Actually, I would love to know some, what someone what what was in one of your take and make kits. And for those of you who did them. Um, I'm going to share. Um, okay. I work at um, the Cross Lanes branch at- Yay, that one's right near me. <laughs> <laughs> and um, where we have several different branches, um, we work together and um, each branch um, was uh, able to choose a craft to make. We made 250 um, kits and then distributed them. Um, each week got, there was a new kit um, so each branch was just responsible for one um, batch of supplies and coming up with ideas. Mm -hmm. And that worked really well for us. And um, so that was good. We also worked with, I believe it was the West Virginia um, WVU Extension. And they provided some STEM kits for us, mm. um, which was good, especially for some of the older kids that weren't necessarily wanting to glue things to a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. um, and that worked out really well. Um, I know that some of the libraries in our system also did supplemental activities um, that were take and make. And we ended up just, we had some little tiny tubs of Play-Doh that we had intended to to use as like a sign up bonus for summer library club. So we threw those in a bag. Um, and as we had extras, we just got a bag, said, hey, would you like some activities, loaded them up. Um, and they really did seem to appreciate that. Um, we are continuing with our craft kits and we're doing it the same way this, um, this go round where each branch is just making up the kits and then we send them out a week before. Um, this time we are doing them every two weeks just because of everybody's a lot more busy this school year. That's great, Olivia. I, I you know, you're probably our largest group, our largest system. So it's really good to see how a large system was able to um, kind of on the spur of the moment, figure out how to do this. That's, that's, that's great. Um, I see in the chat that someone was talking about sword kits. Julie, do you want to um, tell more about that. That sounds really, really interesting. Well, it, it was. We took, um, we took pool noodles and, and cut them uh, three to a pool noodle. And then I made, um, I cut out the handles that you could slip over for the, to cover the kids' hands like a regular sword. And we had a separate um, Facebook uh, program where I showed them how to put together their swords. And then they were to join us again the following day for um, a skit that we did. It was, uh, uh, they fought this bubble monster threatened <laughs> the Marion County Public Library System. And I was the queen of Fairview and I had my, my maidens with me and we fought the bubble monster with these swords. And Mannington came in also, we had a, a, a knight in shining armor Keith from Mannington. So he came in and ultimately killed the bubble monster with his sword. So, I mean, it was a lot of fun doing it and we just didn't get the kits picked up as well as we had hoped they would, but I mean, kids were watching the skit. We had the views. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we just didn't have a whole lot of participation picking up the kits. Yeah. Sounds great though. <laughs> Very creative. Uh, just, yeah. I, I love it. Um, see, I see Robin said they did fairy house, fair, a fairy, a crown and a magic wand. And Deborah gave, what'd you say? You gave a bag of crayons, glue sticks, scissors, and craft bag each week. That's a great idea. Um, so Sherry at Roden County. This is families were happy to get them. Okay. And Beth at Burnsville has activities, three activities, experiments, crafts, two to three passive activities a week. That's really interesting. Um, how you did your passive programming. Beth, do you want to explain how you did your passive programming? Sure. Um, we partner with Braxton County Schools, so we were able to purchase for the activities, experiments, crafts. We were able to purchase enough materials for all of our kits throughout the summer through the Board of Education partnership through mm -hmm. Oriental Trading. So between that and what we had here at the library, we did those types of things. And we did at least three where we provided everything for them. Um, they may have had to use a piece of tape or something from their house, but everything else was provided for them. We even provided um, glue dots if nest you know if we needed them if they needed them the passive programming we did we tried to theme each kit so um we would find power we would find um like word searches or um scavenger hunts outside for different things like we did one kit that was like an animal themed kit so we did an outdoor scavenger hunt that they had to do um, they had to find leaves and bugs different kinds of leaves different kind of bugs mm -hmm. different kind of birds stuff like that so that's kind of what we were talking passively okay. um because we wanted to make sure that they had at least five activities so that they could do like one activity a day if they mm -hmm. wanted to so it worked pretty well we got a lot of um great response from it well, that's good i'm glad to hear that it sounds like we've got more good than bad and ugly so that's that's always good i see casey had said that they had 100 packets a week gave out all 11 weeks wow that's that's amazing um so how did this is to casey or to anybody else who wants to talk about it um did do you think you had more kids participating through the the online and the take and make or less i mean what what's your sense of how this kind of balanced out well generally with the can everybody hear me yes i, okay. I can hear you <laughs> all right generally we have about 75 kids that come through during summer reading and we have it three times a week generally for i don't know two months but this time we were able to actually reach uh, a couple of communities that we didn't have connection with beforehand. So we would pre-make the kits and then we would have 55 of them that we gave out personally. And then we had 20 and 25 that went to uh, communities not central to uh, where the library is. So we were able to do that and get those out which is really good because now we have a connection with those communities that we're using for a preschool story hour and other uh, activities that we're doing uh, i don't really know much about the themes and stuff i know that we did like we chose like rapunzel one time jack and the beanstalk for the in the i'm not sure exactly what activities were in the kits i wasn't really involved in that that was more of a Kathy and Judy thing, but I do know that we had uh, tons of paper uh, like activities that they could do and a craft and stuff every week for from like July until the end. No, it was June until the end of August. So 
and I'm not sure how read squared worked out for us. I keep meaning to ask Judy about that. And every time I go in, I'm like, oh, I forgot to ask her. So I don't know if anybody used it or not. Okay. okay. Well, I know you signed up and um, that's, you know, like I said, if it could be a learning year or just experiment with it when you have some time. Um, <laughs> when you have downtime, yeah, like you ever have downtime, but um, right. when, <laughs> when you can, maybe try to experiment it with experiment with some other um, smaller event that it might see if it could work out for you. Um, I, that's really great, Casey, that that you guys were able to reach communities you don't normally reach. Um, I know a lot, prob a lot of people were probably worried that they weren't going to reach their their kids, but now you may actually end up with more people so maybe there maybe that's the the you know the good out of out of the ugly so um uh, right, so well, go ahead. i know i know that uh preschool story our uh kathy usually had i don't know four or five <laughs> that came constantly and then since we connected with one of the other communities we have 12 new people who have signed up for preschool story hour which is really good because we we needed those boosted numbers. I know last year, the last couple of times, she had maybe three people with kids show up. So now we're having 12 packets that we do a week. That's great. I have that same background, by the way. <laughs> Casey, I have that same background on my Zoom. I didn't use it today. I'm glad we would have clashed. <laughs> <laughs> um, I see here Logan had better participation with the virtual program. They had 34 children signed up. Okay. And the parents said they really liked this. You know, that's, that's what I want. You know, it's really good to hear because I, I, I know you guys probably missed having your in-person programming and missed um, um, all of that. But to see the alternate side of it, really, um, I, I'm glad we're having so many positive um, stories here. So before before we get um, anybody might decide to have a negative one, I'm going to move on to uh, next year, 2021, and unveil the artist for 2021 is Selena Yoon. And uh, you may know her from her Kiki and Jack's books, um, her Penguin series, the book Found, Stormy Night, Be a Friend, and Bear's Big Day. So she is um, a of, She's really got a lot of um, a lot of cute little. Um, she does a lot of cute books. So um, I was I was sorry. I was reading this about uh, Mingo County. They had fifty kids. So that's that's great to see. Okay, so she's our artist this year, and again this year we're going to be doing um, one artist for all four themes, so we won't have that kind of disconnect that they've had in the past, so we're trying to get the theme, you know, try to get it to, uh, to be coherent, and um, no, coherent, I'm not being coherent, um, this is our, uh, excuse me, early literacy um, and if you see some of her books you can really see her um, style in in this one and in the children's theme um, I think these are adorable I really like them um, and oops I lost my chat again I just I wanted to see what the story walk was <laughs> who that was sorry Okay, well, that's great about the 4-H. Uh, that's a, I think for this year, for this coming year, um, for 2021, 4-H might be a really amazing partner for you um, to, to think about doing some animal related um, programming. Um, so we, of course, these are, like I said, the early literacy and, and the children's. And we're gonna move into the adult teens. The teens, um, I don't know what happened here, um, and then the adult is the same thing. Um, my suspicion is she was originally 
Selena was going to be our artist for the oceanography theme and they switched her to this theme because she fit more into this than the um the artist they had for 2021 20, he he's more of the um social awareness type and they moved him to 2022 which will be the kind of like the all together now kind of theme so i'm suspecting she was working on some oceanography and just switched these around because we go from these cute little farm animals and jungle animals to mermaids and whales and i'm like i or she was just going because they have tails i don't know i personally don't particularly care for the the teen art and the adult art so i'm going to be de definitely going with the, the the children's themes um this year so that's um i see what you're oh we got we got somebody who likes the whales and the octopus okay well great um so the, the great thing about this is it gives you op you know the opportunity to use all all of the things whether you think that that would work um for you yeah, Lovecraft. That's what I kept thinking of with the tentacles and everything. I'm like, that's Cthulhu, right? <laughs> so I don't think that would be a very charming tale to to in, include. But um, so there's that's um, so that's the artwork so far. There's no um, issue with it as far as I know. Um, it has gone through the inclusion committee and it has gone to. Um, kind of you know been looked at so i think we are okay with that um and hopefully there will not be a big cluster like we had last year <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> all right so the manual which is probably what you're all chomping at the bit to get to oops um we will have the traditional manual and let me um go off screen share for a little bit here go back to the regular screen here all right this is the manual i got it last week um the this year we'll have a usb drive included instead of a cd those uh for those libraries that at requested the manual this is what you'll get you get this this and a note on how to get into the digital uh, version which i'll explain here in a minute for those of you who just wanted the usb and again that was another issue we had last year we had all of those um something happened to them and some half of them were corrupt and half of them weren't so and i know quite a few of you got unfortunately got that um got some of those so if hopefully the manual this year will i mean the, the um, usb this year will not be corrupt and i've got these as well somewhere they're in my my bag there but it's a basically the same thing and you'll just you will just get that along with your information on how to access online and then for those of you who just wanted online access you will be receiving a letter on how to get in um yeah the manuals i'm going to be sending them out this week hopefully um i've got all of them here the paper ones if you filled out your form earlier this year on what you wanted you'll those of you who requested specifically if you wanted this or paper you'll get yours those of you who didn't or your director didn't spe specify what you were going to get you'll get a paper manual but <clears throat> there's also an on there's also online access and i will show you how to do that here uh, All right, can everyone see the, um, oops, not paused, I don't wanna pause it. All right, well, apparently I can't move that. All right, can everyone see that? Yes, no, thumbs up. Okay, yeah, okay. So this is the, um, the cslpreads.org. This is your, um, this is how you're going to get in to the site this year's a little different in the past you had your own um or you had a, a login you had to request this year i'm going to be sending out a letter um it'll be in all the manuals it'll be in all of the um the usb however you receive your manual you'll receive a letter 
and those of you who just have online will just receive the letter. Um, there is a code on this letter. I'm trying not to show it because it's a public code or not a public code, um, but it that code will uh, allow you to get in and we ask that you um, if you have to photocopy this you, you're, you're welcome to photocopy it for um, everyone who needs access to it just don't put it in a public uh, location so don't hang it up at the circ desk or the reference desk and uh, somebody could see it so it's just it's just for your use only um, so what you'll do is you'll go to login if you don't already have an account um, set one up so right here with register if you do it should hopefully auto auto um, fill and you're in my computer's a little slow this morning <clears throat> and then now you have this right here this download manuals and where it says obtain an online access if you click on that now it'll just tell you to contact me so that's what you've got so if for whatever reason you can't get a copy of your um, your code um, you know email me and I'll I'll send you that code but mm, if you have it what you'll do is you'll go into your online manual and it'll ask you for this code that's in this letter you enter that and I was having slow internet this morning yep. Maybe it did not fill it. Okay, so this is case sensitive, so make sure you um, yeah, it's got my old one in there, I guess. All right, and then now you will have the protected uh, side of the of the website. So here's all of your downloads right here. You've got by chapter. These are all PDF. Um, you have it by age group and then you have all your goodies down here. You have your artwork, you have your um, the text, the slogan only. You have all of the uh, so you have all the artwork. You can actually go over here and then like if you want um, like if you just want the art and then you just so there there you just have the artwork so you don't have to look through all the activities and everything um there should be um there's book lists there's coloring pages so everything that you get um in this actual physical copy you you get here and you can download it all with um Ac if you have acrobat so it's all P it's, they're all pdfs um, except for the art obviously the art is um either jpeg there are some um, EPS and uh, PNGs. So for those of you who are a little bit are on the uh, uh, you use Photoshop or Illustrator or something like that, you've got the um, other options there. Um, again, I, I I always go through the um, um, I always go through the um, rules of use with you at the uh, the big full blown. Um, trainings again same same year same thing as last year there's no real big change in that we have um, um, they haven't updated that so it's still the same a lot uh, more flexibility this year again this year again in the coming year as we had this year about how you can use the artwork still no t-shirts though no t-shirts remember that um, <clears throat> so that's um, that's pretty much still the same. Um, try to use it. Oh, I forgot to show you the um, inclusion statement here. Um, so try not to use it um, on anything like that. Um, but otherwise, you can put it on your. You can make your own uh, logs. You can make your own um, uh, Facebook pages. You know, posts. All that. All that that um, you've asked me about in the past is um, okay, still okay. All right, on the home page, um, this is where they added the um, the statement here. So if you're if you're interested, that's where it was added. Um, and then um, 
there's some new inclusion resources. The um, inclusion committee has um, worked really hard in adding um, a lot of things for um, not just uh, one type of inclusion, but for, for many other things such as, um, you know, minorities and physical um, issues and um, just lots of good resources there. They've, they, they've been working really hard on um, getting that together. All right, um, let's go back to my slides. I have to move you guys over. Okay, so again, um, if you have any problem um, with this, um, the letter, or if you have any problem getting online, let me know, and um, I can try to help you walk you through it best I can. Sometimes I don't know what's going on either. All right, um, again, I just want to promote my um, our our Facebook page. Um, it's really happy that I decided to do this last year because um, we've been able to share a lot of really good things and um, I'll show you some of the stuff that we've been um, been able to share <coughs> I don't have corona I have allergies um, so here is our summer summer reading supporters page that I started last year um, and I've been really happy with um, the sharing we've been doing here I think it helped us out especially early on I'm have to update the, the artwork of course um, I think it helped out a lot earlier to get information out to everyone so if you're not a member please sign up for this um, if you type in WV library summer reading supporters that that'll take you right to the group um, I know um, Nikki at Mary H. Weir's been posting a lot. Stacy at Cabell's been posting a lot. Um, and Denise, of course. Um, but a lot of, it's just, what I see is how to get how to get information out to you guys when we're all kind of just scattered to the um, four winds here. And um, so the last, that was kind of the last thing I wanted to talk to you about um, will be, let me go off share. Um, yeah, the last couple things I needed wanted to tell you is that um, we did um, CSLP did the listening sessions this year, and um, it seemed to work really well for them to get an idea of what's going on um, out in the field. So I'm going to try to incorporate a West Virginia version of that, since I will not be able to do my tour to state this year, which I really am very bummed about because I love going out to seeing everybody and meeting all the uh, folks out in the library out, library worlds in West Virginia and I didn't get to come out to see you guys what you were doing this summer so um, summer reading training will be different this year um, I'm still kind of working on how to do that um, but um, thinking we might do some chat sessions like CSLP did and we can just kind of all share our ideas and kind of what's going on in summer reading world and it all stays in the zoom so you can talk about whatever you want to talk about it won't go any further than that so um i appreciate everybody coming out this morning and if you have any questions as always just give me a call or shoot me an email and i am here um for you guys <laughs>